In a DICOM communication scenario, the actors can take two roles, provider or user. The provider for the storage service class can receive DICOM objects from other applications. The storage CT program from, from DCM4C also implements the verification service class, which means that it can also respond to C echo requests. There are many options to configure this service provider. The DCM4C documentation provides an example of the most basic setup, where we just configure the application entity title, here store SCP, optionally the host and the port on which the DICOM objects will be received. We start the service by executing the store SCP program with those parameters. On the other side of the communication, the role of the user is to send requests to the provider. Here, the store CU program can send C store messages to a provider to send the DICOM file or a C echo message to check if the communication between user and provider is possible. Again, the documentation provides an example of basic usage. We have to provide the destination of the request with the application entity title, the host and the port, as well as the DICOM file that needs to be sent. Let's try to use the verification subclass by executing the program with no DICOM file in the parameters. We immediately see a lot of information appearing on both the provider and user side. To try to make sense of it, let's look at it line by line using the timestamps to see the order of the different steps of the process. Let's take it one step at a time looking at both the user and provider side of the communication. The exchange is initiated by the user when we execute the store CU command. In this step, we try to contact the host on the given port. The provider side will receive the connection and accept it. The user now knows that it can send requests. The first request from the user is the associate request. It contains the application entity titles of the user and provider. Identifiers for the implementation, meaning which program generated this request as well as a presentation context, which contains the subclass, here verification, and the transfer syntax. Provider will then accept or reject the request. It will check if the application entity title is correct, and if it is configured to accept the subclass and the transfer syntax. It will notify the user of its acceptance with the associate accept message. The next message from the user is the core of the communication, in this case, the echo requests. The echo requests follow the same structure as any DICOM file with tags, value representation, and value. It contains a subclass UID and a common field, which tells us, as we can check in the documentation, that this is a C echo request. The user will send back an echo response. It also contains the subclass and the C echo response command field. Each message has an ID, so user and provider can agree on which message they are responding to. The status zero indicates that the operation on the provider side was successful. The final step is the release request from the user and the corresponding response closing the communication. In the next video, we'll look at an existing DICOM server, Orton.